Good evening, friends. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Yet another source has come forth speaking to me privately about this asteroid belt that uh, we have been talking to you about for the past four months. This time, an engineer from FEMA uh, has shared detailed information with us privately uh, that confirms and goes even deeper into the stories that we've been shared, that's been told to us by White House and Pentagon sources. And before I go into all of this, friends, I, I need to first really clarify with you. I don't know, I can't personally confirm this information to be 100% accurate. Uh, do I believe that this is coming? I believe that there's a very real possibility. Uh, and the sources that I have, none of them know one another. From direct advisors to the President of the United States, nuclear physicists, uh, to uh, friends that I have directly connected to the generals in the Pentagon, all the way to FEMA engineer. And we know Celeste Solom, I haven't, I'm not talking about Celeste Solom though, I'm talking about an independent active engineer for FEMA that has not only confirmed the information that's been shared with me, but also has gone even deeper into information uh, that they were privy to about this, I, I have to say, alleged or possible disaster of asteroids that are coming. And I feel like that each of us as individuals, we need to pray ourselves and seek the Lord to know what we should do for our own families. As those of you that know us, know us more personal as well, especially when this whole pandemic of Corona began, we were looking to get out of Florida not so much because of a possibility of an asteroid strike, but because the fact if they shut down the grid, you lose power. If they stop you from having water or something like that in their corona uh, virus pandemic of making sure you can't go anywhere, we needed to get out of Florida to find a place where we could grow food or something. But unfortunately, we don't have the full means to just up and do everything all over again. But we're trying. And there has been those of you that have reached out to us and let us know that there's a place we could go, we could stay here, or we could stay there, and we tremendously appreciate that. And maybe more have offered, and I'm not even aware of it, because, because of all the things that are happening, my emails are really beginning to back up. I'm already 30,000 emails unanswered, and I'm always going through emails, but I just cannot possibly keep up with us, not even counting Yana's emails. I know she's tens of thousands herself as well, uh, and we appreciate and love you guys and your concern for us, but we are once again trying to find a location that we can go to, but we're actually doing this as a permanent move. Uh, because we need a place where we can grow food. But this only, this issue of incoming asteroids only intensifies our resolve to find a place like this. Now, I have also gotten a lot of correspondence from you, from our, our listeners. We are going to create on our website, israelinewslive.org, I want to create just an article page there to where those of you, especially widows, single moms, uh, things like that, that are in vulnerable areas that you're looking to try to get out. Maybe you don't have the means, but perhaps many of the listeners that we have may be in a safer place and they could offer you a place of refuge. So we're going to do that on our website. I'm going to talk about that later in the broadcast. Now, I have this image on here from Google. I'm not saying this is accurate, but from some of the things that I have heard, it really makes me think what I see here to be some of the explanations that have been told to me about what's coming. Um, so I want to get into that 
and share those things with you, what's going on. And as a, as a precursor to this, I want to share with you first the trailer of Green, the Greenland trailer, uh, 2020, Gerald Butler Comet Disaster Movie, because I can't help but believe that the elite are trying to find ways to warn you and are we getting the message is the question. I'm going to discuss with you candidly what's been said to me. But I still want to make it very clear. I have no way to corroborate this information. I don't have NASA backing it up with a news uh, saying this is the case. Although they're beginning more and more to say we have comets and asteroids coming dangerously close to Earth. There was an article that was sent to me uh, by a good friend uh, that I have up in uh, Pensacola. Steve sent me an article uh, it was a couple of years old, but NASA was saying thousands of asteroids were headed to Earth. That seems to have been, to have been forgotten though. Uh, anyway, let's look at this clip here just for a moment give you an idea because this movie clip reminds me of what I've been told. Let's watch about two minutes of this. I don't know. Well, the first house is about to hit. What? Only part of it. It's going to be Would you look at that? Wait, what is the explosion? Getting word that the fragment has hit Central Florida. Wait, are some more pieces gonna hit? Come on, let's go. The sky's on fire. Two days. They got it all wrong. There's a ton of fragments. Planet killers. Space agencies are predicting an extinction level event. We're gonna be together. All right, get up. We're just trying to get to safety. They've been tracking the military flights to bunkers in Greenland. It's our only chance. I think that's probably enough there to get the point across to you guys so you can see what is going on, what's expected, things like that. All right. Now, I was uh, shared originally this information from uh, an advisor to the President of the United States. There are, of course, many advisors to the President of the United States, but the one advisor that shared things with me has been there since uh, the Reagan years. So. He's got quite a bit of knowledge of things going on. He is a scientist as well. And uh, he's really taken a lot of time on a multiple uh, array of subjects to share things with me that I could disseminate to you guys as well. And of course, the asteroid uh, or the asteroid belt, as I call it, uh, he originally shared information with me on. Now, I actually began to talk to him when I first got a memory stick uh, when we were in Kansas from a gentleman, an elderly gentleman, uh, that had done a lot of calculations, and 2023 December was his estimated calculation of the coming of the uh, binary system is the way he called it there, Herboculus, as uh, it is uh, spoken of by the uh, Chilean astronomer that has since passed away that said that this thing had a 3600 year orbit. Okay, now in, in that, he did draw me out a map of a pla places that he considered to be safe and I'm actually, this is not the original map that he sent to me. I've been having a very difficult time finding that but I was able to put it together and I'm going to go back over this map with you a little bit later. But I want to first start off with the information uh, that he shared with me and then I'm going to go into my latest information that I've gotten from a FEMA engineer uh, that has corroborated a lot of this information that was said to me early on. Now let's take and uh, we'll go over here to an email this one here, uh, I'm not sure, let's see, 
Um, yeah, this one here I got back in, I believe it is uh, mid-March, if I'm not mistaken. That was when I got this original email from him, was in mid-March. And uh, so I'm going to read some highlighted points for you. I will blow this up for you so you can see this a little bit better on the screen. And uh, let me just, pardon me there, get it a little bit bigger here because I know that's very difficult to see that print there. Uh, I was asking about the ask, uh, about Planet X, basically. Uh, but he writes me here, this subject has grown, has grown to be extremely complex. Over three decades ago, the forecast of catastrophic, catastrophic environmental challenges and timelines were disclosed to me. All right, now that was three decades ago. 30 years ago, the timelines were disclosed to him then. Luckily, the timeline was somewhat inaccurate as certain dates have passed and nothing happened. All right. Um, he goes on to say later in this art in this letter to me, extraterrestrial events seem to be close to being on schedule with exception to elevated radiation. All right. Notice that wording right there. Extraterrestrial events seem to be close to being on schedule. That extraterrestrial events are the incoming asteroids all right our solar system is just starting to go through a what you may call asteroid belt of sorts crossing this belt is like run running across a five-lane highway full of differing types of traffic at random speeds the chances you will get hit are very high. Now we're looking in the purple here. The chances you get hit by a bicycle, little damage exists, but not like as not as likely as um, something. Let me take this down a little bit because going back and forth is a little irritating there. Uh, getting hit by something larger or faster moving. Divinely, Jupiter generally blocks the big stuff from hitting us. That's something I also I thought was interesting because I actually saw this on a documentary just recently that Jupiter does seem to ward off a lot of the, the asteroids that are coming in. But he continues, thus we have a general idea of probabilities for about 80% of the rocks, but 20% are either too fast or just simply missed. However, the elevated radiation hitting our Earth was not understood or known or considered, and this radiation has caused the Earth to heat up internally, much like an egg, and cracks um, are starting to form. These cracks were not anticipated, and implications are under great debate. Example, in certain cases, fresh water is draining into these cracks, displacing weight and other dynamics used in complex calculations that determine many things about terrestrial life and potential challenges. In other words, what's happening, the bunkers that they built to go underground and to be safe are no longer safe. He goes on to say, as I am a nuclear scientist, but I do not know of many projects that used to cul uh, use cultivated and are so-called weaponized viruses. That's a different issue altogether. Uh, we'll skip that. Alone, the risk associated with releasing a virus into an atmosphere. Okay, I, I know why I put this out here. A virus into the atmosphere. They are generally more concerned. See, he was getting into the issue about the coronavirus and what actually happened in Wuhan and what happened over in Iran those areas were being or, or he was discussing in this letter but also in another letter as well that the government was very concerned about uh, China giving uh, weaponized grade chemical weapons to Iran that we didn't have the ability to mitigate we had no way to protect our populations from those type of weapons now the coronavirus is not that particular issue but he goes on as he's saying in here 
that there were the, the potentials of releasing that virus in our atmosphere, but he says they are generally more concerned about natural disasters, events damaging the containment that, uh, than terrorist event. So he's letting you know here in this part of the letter that he's far more concerned about uh, the situation. Uh, you know, I'm going to back this out a lot more, and I'll tell you why, because I'll just take, for you guys, I'll copy this letter in there to where you can see it as I'm speaking about it. Uh, so he said, you know, he's showing you that the government is more concerned about the incoming natural disasters or even how this this system that is coming our way, he said to me, would affect our weather drastically. Uh, we would have storms like never before, tornadoes, earthquakes would begin to multiply, uh, especially earth, you know, earthquakes, all these things here are going to be happening on the earth. Now, granted, keep in mind, we also know the government has weather manipulating uh, devices at their disposal. So I wouldn't be put it a bit past them either to be using that and then blaming it on something else. But that's all, you know, we got to look at all of this in the basket together. I don't know which one is going to be the more accurate uh, source on this. He goes on to say, up until 2010-ish, underground bunkers were the focus of safety and billions were spent on them. Now there is doubt being expressed because of the heating of the earth internally and these bunkers becoming too hot to live in and to add insult to injury, flooding, it would be one thing if the flood water, flooding was temporary, but there, there are significant ocean displacement concerns. Significant ocean displacement concerns? Hmm. Knowing all the complexities and given how complex your question really is, I am very sorry to say that the best I can do is give you my opinion based on probabilities. Keep in mind that no place is completely safe or without risk. Events. Israel, ironically and strangely, is the safest place to move but will suffer from earthquakes, wind problems, followed by Central Africa, followed by Central China. All right. Now, by the way, that Israel included Syria as well. Okay. I did get that confirmed later. In the USA, things don't look good. Earthquakes, volcanoes, floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, very strong winds, 100 miles per hour, etc. Missouri is the official FEMA safe haven for USA and impervious plate zones, followed by Nebraska. However, Nebraska is expected to have much worse wind tornado damage due to its flat elevation. Now, this was given to me four months ago. And by the way, on the 15th, of September, it will be six months that I actually received this letter. I say that because in another letter I had gotten uh, from my good friend Glenn here, he had actually spoke about the time frame of how much time I actually had to try to relocate. And that just so happened to be, um, uh, was uh, roughly six months is what, what, what I actually had. Another thing, though, I wanted to bring up to you, and, that, and this is uh, something my wife had mentioned before that she wanted to bring out again, and I'll just mention this uh, in passing, uh, but she'll bring this out in another message here. One of the things that Glenn had said to me as well, he says, I compose this email in hopes that it will slip through the cracks since there are so many things going on. See asterisk once had compelling reasons. Now that's a computer simulated program, an AI system that was being used by the government up until Bill Clinton's administration. But it's now equivalent to the full blown dark side, no longer caring about Americans. Americans are just part of the herd and a potentially the enemy now. I throw that in there because the whole point is, is what we're facing, uh, is that they really don't care about the American people when all these asteroids are coming our way. Now, and so speaking about these asteroids, uh, one thing I just want to remind you about is besides Glenn saying these things to me, I have uh, another source as well with uh, does a lot of work with the Pentagon, very close to the generals, etc., and I was also 
all the information I've shared that, that Glenn has told me about, they have also confirmed that yes, indeed, and I've shared this with you already, that, uh, that September, now this is, their, this is what they're telling me. I, I can't say this for sure, but they were telling me that come September, there would not be anybody on the planet that doesn't know that we are in serious trouble. Now that's what Glenn said to me directly in a private, secured phone conversation that we had, that September, no one, everybody on the planet would know that we are in serious trouble. Now, that was confirmed by another friend that with, with direct sources with generals in the Pentagon, and went even further as to say that the people would be able to see with their own naked eye this system coming in. I call it a system, and maybe that's not a good terminology to say, but I look at, I have this kind of picture in my mind that, and not necessarily like that all at one time, but in the beginning we're getting some big rocks fly by, but eventually it's supposed to be like this debris of just little small rocks that are going to be entering into the atmosphere and just pummeling the earth. And that was, again, confirmed by another source, and then I get a contact from an engineer with FEMA to not only confirm all this information that's been told to me before, but also that FEMA has instructed their people to buy ham radios and get licenses, operator licenses, and begin to learn to use them. And it was also shared with me that they know with these asteroids incoming that there's nothing that they can do to save the population here in the United States, let alone in other parts of the world. I was told by this one individual here, and forgive me if they happen to watch the program here, if I misquote, but I'm trying to do this as accurately as I possibly can, that it is believed that sometime around September, maybe a little later, we would see the first strike on the Earth somewhere where it'll be a populated area. And that's what will cause people to realize we're in trouble. And that it would continue to happen week after week, month after month, going in. But by the time December came around, weather events and everything on the Earth would go completely, completely erratic. Now this is exactly what I was being told by Glenn in the very beginning that it would also affect our weather because of the gravitational pull and things like that on the Earth. Now I am told by the, the latter two sources, the friend of mine that works uh, as contractor with direct general ties in the Pentagon, I also have my own Pentagon source as well, and that of my uh, FEMA engineer, that this will continue all the way in through into next year. And roughly around March or April, then the planet comet, and according to the source that I have with the Pentagon there, it's the same thing that is spoken of by Farada, the Chilean astronomer, Herbuculus, the planet comet, would actually be coming through itself. Our magnetosphere, Glenn said to me, the magnetosphere that we have will take a sudden jolt and will actually collapse. The poles will shift. This is when we will see upwards to 200 mile an hour and even higher winds for about the space of six hours on the planet. Are these things true? I can't really say, friends. But I know the sources that I have are reliable men, reliable women that know the things that they're speaking about. And they believe them as well. Glenn is a scientist and very much in the know of what's going on. He has told me how assets have been moved. 
He has told me how that in Washington, D.C., all the assets are being moved out of D.C. because there will be no Washington, D.C. The FEMA engineer has also confirmed the exact same thing, saying that there will be basically two capitals in the United States because the United States will be divided. It'll be Colorado Springs, Colorado, and Atlanta, Georgia. I want to take you, and let me just see real quick if I can pull up on this too. Um, it's been very famous, the maps that have come out about pole shifts, things like that. Uh, I don't know which map is more accurate. Uh, this one here is the one that John Moore used to speak about a lot. Uh, and let me just see if I can't. I'll try to save a couple of these images here so we get a better look at them. And, uh, but I know there's differing opinions about uh, which one is going to be more accurate. And uh, so let's just take, we'll try this one right here. Let me just see if I can't make it bigger on the screen by copying it here for you. All right. Yeah, we can make it a lot bigger this way, I believe. Or at least where it's a little bit clearer. This, if, I don't know how well you can see this on here, but up the Mississippi River called the New Madrid, I believe is what they call that fault line there. That's where the United States will actually split in half. That's supposedly going to be caused by the pole shift itself. The west coast of the United States will be com just completely decimated away. I've even been told that Atlantis would rise back up again. Other places will rise up back off the seafloor. But I was also told that Florida, especially southern Florida, would sink to 100 feet beneath the ocean. 200 feet, friends, beneath the ocean. And it all depends on, like I said, the map that you might look at, different maps, and, and who's to say. I mean, you get some crazy ones like this one here where there's no Florida, no Georgia, no nothing. Uh, I mean, some really crazy things, which makes you wonder just how safe uh, Missouri really is. They even show Arkansas gone. Uh, everyone I've talked to, though, has, has said that those places I've told you about are actually safe, that that's not actually correct. But who really knows? Who really does know what's going to be safe, what's not going to be safe? Uh, I have been told, though, that Florida will be totally devastated. Um, that Miami, and this is from my FEMA source, Miami, Orlando, Jacksonville, and even Savannah will be totally wiped out. Uh, the state of Washington completely destroyed. Now, I don't know if this is because they know of impacts or from what I understand is from uh, tidal waves or ocean rising, things like that. That's what I've been told. Washington, D.C., I've also been told, would be totally destroyed. Uh, but there's also a lot of other things that have been said. And, but in all cases, in this, in this green zone right here, in Missouri, the, basically the Ozarks. And the Ozarks are all supposed to be very strong and impervious to earthquakes and things like that. That is the reason why this is considered the safe area. And now he also said Nebraska would be safe, not just down here in the, this corner right here, but supposedly a lot of Nebraska is a safe zone as well. Uh, but again, when we were talking on the phone, he said none of these places are without a threat of meteorites hitting the earth because he said we don't know where all of them are going to fall at. So I want to make sure that I make that clear as well. And again, remind you, I can't say for sure. I mean, September could come and go and no meteorites strike the earth whatsoever. Um, I'm only basing these things off of what I believe to be very reliable people that would not just say something to say it. And there's too many strange events going on. Uh, I was also told that this was the reason why 
the coronavirus just happened to be at this time the way it is in order to lock the people down. Uh, I was told that there were decades uh, spent to try to, to know what would work that would keep people in place when the time comes. Uh, there's been doctrines that have been started, by the way, that keep people not believing that this would happen in the first place, that it can happen, that were started intentionally so that you would not try to do anything. And quite frankly, I don't know what to say uh, when it comes to that. I, all I can tell you is that I think we're living in an hour where we really need to pray. We need to have our lives closer to Jesus Christ than we've ever had them before. You need to spend time with your family. It's not a time to panic. It's a time of resolve and it's a time to think level-headed. It's a time to pray to truly seek the Father to know is there something that we need to be doing should we move I know there's been many people have told me if it's my time to go it's just my time to go and, and and I don't know if you went right here to what they call to be a safe zone I can't say that a meteorite won't strike the earth there and take you out the only thing that's safe about this area here is earthquakes California's coastline and stuff, all the, all the fault lines I've been told will become active, especially as we get into next year. Uh, meteorites are what's going to be hitting the earth in the beginning. That will begin to start creating a lot of earthquakes. But December and on, this is when things will really begin to pick up. I was told by the FEMA engineer that they have been told in FEMA, some of the sources that, that they have, is that when the smaller rocks come in, they come in a little later, but when they come in, it'll be like a firestorm that never seems to end. Could this be the judgment that we see in the Bible when God says He would rain down uh, hailstones about the weight of 70 pounds? Maybe so. Maybe so. You know, I encourage you, as I said, to really pray. I did want to share with you also in closing here, this map here that was put out by the Washington Post. These, this is one of the latest maps about basically lockdowns, things like that. I noticed California is completely locked down. Alaska is not locked down at all. Washington's partially these states here, Oregon, Colorado, New Mexico, uh, Pennsylvania, and D.C. also pretty, pretty dangerous areas, so to speak. But I have wondered if some of these closures and stricter measures is because they know these are maybe target zones. I don't know the answer for sure. I do know, I have been told that there will be a meteorite that will strike the Pacific Ocean and that's what ends up affecting the West Coast drastically. Other than that, I have no idea where any of the stones are going to hit, when they will hit, and quite frankly, if they really will hit. But what I, the reason why I really make this video, friends, is because it is so unusual to see NASA reporting so many asteroids passing the Earth right now. Three last month, five this month, September, they got more coming. September is supposed to be a very close encounter. I think August as well. That seems a little bit unusual, at least to me. I don't know how much this is, it, it helps you, but I trust that it does. I am going to take on our website, uh, I'm hoping within the next day or two, like I said, it will be very simple. I'll just post a simple article on there that this forum is here to help connect people that are fearful and want to be able to leave the areas that they are in. 
I've had people from all over the country, especially widows and single moms that have contacted me saying, brother, where could I go? I've had handicapped people saying, I'm stuck here and I'm afraid I want to leave. I want it to be where you can go and post your comment a little bit about yourself and how you can be contacted. And be careful though, I don't want you to just share any information because I don't know who the people would be that would be contacting you and you need to understand that. But I'm trusting that it will be for believers. And that if there is a believer that can help someone and you would say, look, you go in there, don't post your information if you're the one that can help someone because otherwise you'll have 5,000 people contacting you. You look at the people you see that might need help, that might post in there, and then let them know if you can contact them directly. Maybe first by email, something like that. Make sure that there's safety on both sides, that every precaution's being taken, because we're trusting that everybody's doing this in the right spirit, with the right love. And then let the person know, we could help you. We have a place for you to stay at, or however the details, and you guys work that out together. We just want to facilitate some type of mechanism where people can contact and communicate with each other. So I, as soon as I have that put together, I will come back here on Israeli News Live and let you know. Uh, those of you that do want to continue to support the work we do here, we do tremendously appreciate it. Uh, like I said, for us, things are very difficult right now. And we do need to make another move because here we've already been told that water will be cut off eventually, electrical grid will be cut off eventually, and no way to grow food or anything. In fact, where we live, you're not allowed to have a garden or anything. Um, but there's going to be many people in that same predicament. Uh, so my heart uh, is for those that will also be in that predicament and as a, not only that, not only the fact we're working on trying to get out, we're also looking at trying to help a, a, a few other people as well to do the same. And of course we're dealing more along the line of widows and things like that. But I believe that by God's grace we can all do a little bit together to help one another. If for some merciful grace of God that this does pass us and it's not really as bad as it's been made out to me, that would be the greatest desire in my heart to be. But I don't know that for sure. And I would rather somebody warn me, at least let me know as I'm trying to tell you so that you can make prayerfully the decision for you and your family. Anyway, thank you. Thank you for listening. Our website is IsraeliNewsLive.org. If you want to give, you can go there online or you can just follow our address here, here in Florida, here at Champions Gate Boulevard. God bless you and thank you.